Hey there, everybody, it's Russ, and today we are going to do another deep, nerdy dive on cycling shoes, and specifically my quest to find the ideal minimalist style flat pedal cycling shoe. So yes, a little bit of a niche within a niche within a niche today. I think for those of you that are looking for the same, you'll probably appreciate this. So this is for you guys. First off, I thought I would start from the very beginning and kind of define what a minimalist shoe is and compare it to the current trend of cycling shoes. So let's look at this shoe. This is the Merrill Trail Glove, and it's kind of a, a pretty good example of some aspects of a minimalist shoe. Typically, a shoe can be minimalist in construction, so very few materials, low bulk. It's also minimalist insofar as there is very little drop in the shoe. So that difference in height between the heel to the forefoot is typic is usually zero. Most regular sneakers and athletic shoes, there's usually a drop of six to eight mil. And while this doesn't sound like a lot, in practice, it actually makes a big difference. So another aspect of minimal shoes is that uh, they're, they tend to be really flexible and they make the muscles in your feet work. Another key point is they are foot shaped. And I know if you're not familiar with this idea, you may be saying, aren't all shoes foot shaped? Yes, to a lesser or greater degree. But if you look closely at your feet, I think that many people have a foot that's not a pointy toe like you would see in most shoes, but it actually comes to more of a blunt uh, rounded end here. So minimalist, AKA foot shaped or barefoot shoes, if you will, tend to follow this natural contour of your foot rather than jamming it into a little torpedo such as this shoe. This is a typical cycling shoe. This is a pretty good example of a modern minimal uh, shoe. So why would you want this and why do I think it's beneficial to have a shoe like this in cycling and can't you just use any typical minimal shoe? I know these are the, the questions that are gonna be coming up. First off, outside of biking, Laura and I actually do a fair amount of running and we tend to run in minimal trail running shoes, so zero drop, I prefer a little bit more cushion. She likes a really, really minimal shoe. And for us, the search for a minimal cycling shoe is just so we can extend you know, what we're used to in walking and running into cycling. I think if you don't use a minimal shoe already or don't buy into it, then you're probably gonna have like zero net gain. For us, the reason we prefer a minimal cycling shoe is just so it can kind of continue the foot shape that we're used to in running and walking as well as the lack of drop. So I'm not saying that it's gonna make you faster, more watts or more efficient, but if you trail run or road run and you like kind of a zero drop shoe, and if you wanna see a shoe with a similar ethos that also works well in cycling, then that's what we're gonna get into today. So that is kind of a short brief lesson on the minimalist barefoot shoe. So let's look at your typical cycling shoe. You can see here, that they are fairly narrow and they don't follow the same contours that a barefoot minimalist shoe would be. So that, that is issue number one. Uh, most cycling shoes tend to be on the narrow side. Another good example is this one. This is the uh, 510 Freeride. Now we like these shoes for, for what they are, but we do think that they could be better. This one actually tends to be wider than most, which is a bit of, of a surprise. Where a shoe like this fails is that it is pretty overbuilt. I mean, this is a pretty heavy shoe compared to something like this. This is one of the areas where the cycling industry has just given up. They assume typically that if you're going to be riding flat pedals, that you're going to be mountain biking and you need a big burly shoe for protection, completely ignoring the fact that a lot of people would like a a cycling specific flat pedal shoe that is also kind of minimal. That has some aspects of a road shoe, but for flat pedals. This is like the big black hole in the cycling uh, shoe universe, if you will. All right, so we've talked about minimalist shoes and the current trend of cycling shoes. What are the shoes that I've tried and that I like or, or dislike? So one of the shoes I tried recently with high hopes was the Chrome Truck. Uh, the non SP the non SPD version. Uh, I had high hopes. You know, it looks like it has a thin canvas upper, which it does. However, still a little bit on the pointy toe size. And if I were to size up so I could get that wide toe splay that I'm accustomed to, it would make the shoe too long and it would just be kind of clown footed. Not to mention that it's also fairly heavy uh, when compared to a shoe like the Astral or especially something like the Merrill. So it does a decent job. Not quite there. And I think, I know many of you had suggested van shoes or other type of canvas uh, sneakers, and they tend to have the same issues. Uh, namely, still the narrow toe, 
as well as the as well as a pretty heavy shoe for for what it is. Another minimalist piece of footwear, uh, not exactly a shoe because it is a sandal that is popular with cyclists is the Bedrock. Again, this has lots of great qualities. It's zero drop. A generally actually pretty supportive sole if you pair it with the right pedal. Of course, it does have the issue of having an exposed toe, which freaks me out personally in, insofar as I don't want to you know, bash my toes into rocks or into the wheel or spoke or whatever. So I have ridden in these. Um, these are actually too minimal for me. I, I need something a little bit more built up. Otherwise, on too long of a ride, I start to really feel it in my calf. So that is the Bedrock Sandal. Another shoe that comes in pretty close is this shoe by Zero, another minimal slash barefoot trail running brand. And it's got a lot of things that we like in a minimalist shoe. It's got a whitish toe box, Again, closed toe, so works great for cycling. Fairly lightweight, not excessively bulky, and has a good amount of support. Uh, this is Laura's shoe, so I have not spent a ton of time on it. She tends, she tends to like it for, for cycling and doesn't have too many issues with uh, this shoe. Gr another great minimalist barefoot style shoe brand is the brand Lems. And this one is their casual shoe, but I actually quite enjoy it for cycling. Again, looking at the profile, nice big wide toe box, allows for a lot of toe splay, has a more natural foot shape, zero drop, so you don't have any of that rise between your heel and your toe. It is pretty flexible. In the first few weeks I rode in these shoes, uh, I would get cap cramps just because I wasn't used to uh, such flexibility in, in, in a shoe while cycling. That is one thing to note, if you're coming from a more built up shoe with a high stack height, uh, you may experience cap pain when you go to a low drop or zero drop shoe. It just takes some adjustment. And lastly, two shoes uh, that Astral sent in. A lot of people recommended the brand Astral. Uh, I was familiar with them. You know, they make water shoes for, for kayaking. These are actually great wet wading shoes as well. And I was really hopeful that these shoes would fit the bill of something that I could take bike camping, bike fishing, cycling, walking, and hiking, and all that stuff. They sent over uh, two shoes. This is the, I believe it's called the Loyak. And this shoe is super minimal. Uh, you can see it's got a great uh, foot shape design, very, very flexible sole, rubber interior here. Uh, what's great about this shoe is that it's great for if you're doing lots of water sports, if you're kayaking, uh, if you're wet wading, this shoe drains out pretty quickly and also dries out pretty quickly. I found for my feet and my calf muscles, it was a little bit too flexible. I was getting the same issue I was getting with the Lems insofar as I was getting calf pain just because I wasn't accustomed to something so flexible like this shoe uh, doing a long ride. And that brings us to the final shoe and the shoe that I actually like the most amongst the ones I've tried so far and it is the Astral TR1 Junction. They make a couple of variations of the shoe. This is the uh, slightly more bulkier one more built up with the intent that you would take this hiking on rocky trails and uh, you know, truly a multi-sport shoe. So it has lots of things I like. It's got a whitish foot shape, although so interestingly, it does feel a little bit narrower when compared to this shoe. At first I thought it was a little bit too tight, but after getting it wet, taking it fishing and biking, it did stretch out and is more uh, foot friendly to me. Other things I like about it is that it has a fairly low drop. It's got a great durable tread, which is awesome for walking, wet wading, and also for pedals that have traction pins. I know some of you are gonna suggest why not just use a trail running shoe. A lot of trail running shoes tend to use a softer rubber or they have exposed EVA foam. So I run in Hoka's and if I pedaled in those, they'd just be torn up in a couple weeks. But something like this, which has a, a kind of more durable rubber bottom is awesome on a bike. I know some of you have mentioned the Ultra Lone Peak shoes uh, and, and I ran in those when I first got into trail running and I like them, but their top mesh wasn't very durable and would get torn up by any kind of traction pin on the pedal. And also every time they update the Lone Peak, it is a completely different shoe. So it's hard to really buy into uh, that model. So these are all the, the shoes I've tried so far in my quest for the perfect uh, minimal style cycling shoes. Of all these, my two favorites has to be the Lems and this Astral. At first, I didn't really like riding in the Lems. Again, my calves weren't fully acclimated, but the more I do, you have to build that leg and foot strength incrementally. 
uh, the more I like these. Out of the box, these were probably the most comfortable. As you can see, it's got a bit stiffer sole than the limbs. So this didn't put as much strain on my, my calf and Achilles tendon and all that stuff. So if you're minimalist shoe curious um, and want to kind of accelerate the process, I would definitely recommend the Astral TR1 Junctions. I think they're a good balance of many aspects of a minimal shoe that I like. It still has a slightly bulkier construction where it's supportive. You can use it on multiple sports, bang it against rocks and still have protection around your foot. I don't know if my quest is quite over yet, but this shoe is pretty dang close. And I'm gonna do a specific long-term review of this shoe uh, in a couple months after I've had more miles and more kind of trips with it. So stay tuned for that. But what do you think of this whole minimalist cycling shoe idea? Are we just crazy here on Path Less Pedaled? Let me know in the comments below. Have you guys gone on a similar search? What shoes do you recommend? I wish I could try them all, honestly, again. You know, if I didn't mention your favorite shoe, please don't take it as a personal offense. You know, we just have a limited time and budget. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like more kind of quirky, niche, non-competitive cycling content, consider supporting the channel. And as always, keep the supple side down.